All right. 6.2, then, uh, is all about recording adjusting entries and then completing those adjustments on the adjustment columns on the worksheet. So if you guys think back, try to think back to when you journalized prepaid insurance or supplies, was that mainly a debit or a credit? Do you guys remember? Well, what, what, what category do they belong into? Are they assets, liabilities, or owner's equity? Pre they're assets, right? So when you guys made journal entries for them, which column did you put them in? Do you remember? Yeah, they were always debits. All right. Um, these things, prepaid insurance and supplies, they are things called prepaid expenses. All right. And they get used up at some point. So a supply could be anything from like a stack of paper towels or something like that. Right. If somebody buys a bunch of paper towels at the, you know, they probably do so in bulk, right? If a school buys a bunch of paper towels, they'll probably buy a giant pallet of these things. They might have a hundred rolls of paper towels in them. Now, those are all supplies at that point. And when they buy them all, when they buy that point, they would account for it and they would debit supplies because it would be considered an asset. You have a hundred rolls of paper towels that you can use. What happens though to those paper towels? They get used, don't they? And eventually you need to buy more. When a paper towel roll gets used, it's not an asset anymore, right? It got used up. It becomes an expense. So the same thing happens to common ones, prepaid insurance and supplies that we use, is things get used up. And when they get used up, you have to show that they get used up. And the accounting term for using something up is expensing it, all right? When you expense paper towel rolls, then you would decrease the asset by that. Now, if you buy 100 paper towel rolls in a single box, and let's just say that single box box co costs $100, right? That would be roughly a dollar per paper towel roll. Now, say the school uses 10 rolls per month. What their accounting is going to do is not, they're not going to like take out and expense $10 every single fiscal period. They're not going to go in and count all of those things but they would expense it when the whole box is used. All right. And they have to go out and buy a new box. All right. That would make a little bit more sense. So accounting is uh, precise and specific like that, but it's not super nitpicky like that either. All right. So they would wait until the entire quantity gets used before they actually kind of go. So if you guys debited prepaid uh, insurance or supplies, how would you show that they were expensed? What would you do to, a prepaid insurance or supplies account. Yeah, you would credit it. If you credit it, it would decrease it, right? Credits decrease assets, debits increase assets. And so that's what we're going to do here. And just a little bit of kind of review when you're talking about uh, adjustments, we're using the accrual basis of accounting. I talked about this a little bit when we watched uh, that short video on Enron. But the accrual basis of accounting is following these gap principles that require the use of that. And it just means that we are reporting income uh, when it is earned, not when we necessarily receive the cash for it. Because remember back when Delgado Web Services makes a sale on account, they count it as a sale, don't they? Now they didn't receive cash for it yet. That business, whoever they sold it to owes them money but they still count it as a sale. That's a cruel basis of accounting. Cash basis of accounting would say they don't count it as a sale until they receive the actual cash for it, all right? But you have to use the accrual basis of accounting, not the cash basis of accounting. And the same works for ex uh, expenses too. Expenses, uh, when they are actually uh, incurred is called the accrual basis. Uh, down in the cash basis, expenses when cash is actually paid out for those things. Um, business, some businesses use cash basis of accounting for some things. Um, the general accounting principles say that you can only use cash basis accounting when it's not uh, materially important or when it doesn't like deal with a really, really big number. Okay, when it's a small little thing that really it doesn't matter if you use one method or the other, 
then it's fine. So when you need to expense something like an asset, our supplies, our, our thing of paper towels needs to get expensed, uh, we need to also set up and move those things into an expense account. And we're going to make an adjustment at the end of the fiscal period for whatever was used up. So these are four questions that you should ask yourself when you are making an adjustment on a worksheet. All right. What is the balance of the account to be adjusted? What should the balance be? What must be done to correct the amount? And then what is the final adjustment made? So let's look at um, an example. So in this example, we had supplies, right? So sometime during the month of January, this business, Delgado Web Services, bought $620 worth of supplies, all right? They could be one thing of supplies. They could be a whole bunch of different types of supplies. However, at the end of January 31st, the balance is 620. So our total general ledger balance for supplies was 620. If we need to make an adjustment to this, because we'll say that uh, $530 of those expenses were used, this is how we would make that adjustment. We have two accounts here. So supplies, our T account, this just helps you kind of visualize what's happening here. Supplies is one account, supplies expense is the other account. We started with $622 throughout the month of January. At the end of January, we did an inventory and we found out that $530 of our supplies was used. Therefore, we need to make an adjustment for $530, leaving a new balance in supplies of 90. So the adjustment would be, remember we have credits, debits, credits, debits, credits. We're just going to move, we're going to credit supplies for $530 and debit supplies expense. This decreases supplies, this increases the expense. All right. Our new balance then is the difference between these two. So if you go 620 minus 530, supply still has a debit balance of $90. That's mean we're positive supplies. We still have $90 worth of supplies left in that account. This is just an example of what we'll do on the actual worksheet. And we'll go through that together on the Cengage site. Make sure you keep your credits and your debits. And this is just transferring the T account information over to the actual uh, worksheet itself. Same thing with insurance expense. So we said insurance expense, you always pay for insurance beforehand. You always prepay it. Even personally, you guys do that, whether it's health insurance or car insurance or whatever, you pay your premium ahead of time. For me, my car insurance, I pay it one time a year and I pay the full amount for the whole year because I get a discount if I do that. And so I do it. Right. And it's a lot. You know, it's like 1500 bucks or something like that, right? So every year, February, I got to cut a check to the insurance company for $1,500. Now, businesses do the same thing too, and it's called a premium. When you pay a per month or like a per year or every six months, you pay an amount to an insurance company, it's called a premium. And a premium is good for the whole period, okay? But what businesses do is when they first pay that, they consider it an asset. Because insurance, even though it's not a tangible thing like supplies, like some paper towel rolls, it still is an asset because it hasn't been used yet. So at the beginning of the period, you would pay your insurance premium. All right. And I think for this one, uh, the idea is that they're paying a six month premium. So in January, they pay $900 for insurance. And that's good for six months. However, after every single month, they have to expense the part that was used up. They expense one month worth of insurance premiums. And so the adjustment would look similar to what we had before. So if you have $150 per month was used up at the end of January, you have to adjust prepaid insurance and expense $150 of it. So you do that by the same method. You credit, because this is an asset, you credit it for 150 that decreases prepaid insurance and you debit insurance expense for 150 because you're going to increase the expense. The balance then of the asset is still 750 bucks. And then the same thing on the worksheet. And we'll look at this together in just a second.
do the totals afterwards, just like we did before. And then that's it. So we'll slide over and do the Cengage stuff real quick. So here's our worksheet. We already did the trial balance column. Um, now we need to work on the adjustments column. And so we have two things that we need to do. All right, we have adjustments for supplies on hand is $75 and the value of the prepaid insurance is 250. These are balances, all right? These are not the adjustment amounts, these are the balances. So to figure out, we'll do supplies first. Let's look at how much in supplies we had. So if we look at supplies, we had, uh, we had $228 to start with. We have on hand $75 left. And so the difference, you would go 228 minus the balance of 75 gives you one, what is that, 155? 153? 153. You know, speed it up. 153 is what? That is our adjustment. $153 is our adjustment. So in the adjustments column, we know that we are going to need to debit supplies expense because that expense is going to go up for $153. Nope, just 153. And we're going to credit supplies for 153. And that's it. There's our debit. There's our credit. We would do the same thing for value of prepaid insurance. We would start with, if we look at prepaid insurance, the asset, we started April with $375 worth. The value left over is $250. So we need to make the adjustment for the difference. So if we go $375 minus $250, that's $125. Our debit down here goes to insurance expense for $125. Then we are going to credit prepaid insurance for $125. Just like before, once you're done making the entries, add all the way down the column at the bottom. 125 plus 153 is 278. This should be the same, 278. And that's it. So why don't you guys do quickly the on your own one and then we can probably chill out a little bit. We'll be done. 